Hello, this is Maya Heisenbuttle again, and today I've had a couple of requests for um, help with like a drag and drop kind of game. And so the idea is that it would be an educational game, and for example, you would drag the pictures and make them match up on the different parts of the tree, for example, which I'm not doing a very good job with, but you get the idea. So um, the whole point is that dragging and dropping things in MIT App Inventor can be a little tricky. So first off, what I did is I just made a canvas. I put a picture on the canvas. In this case, it's just a tree. It's not a big deal. Uh, I've got root placement. So sorry, my computer's freaking out. Um, I've got these little dots where I want things to be placed. Um, and we'll go over getting them to those locations here in a minute. Um, just because that gives me a, a point where I can get them, like kids were going to drag them to there. And all that point is, is it's a little circle. You could honestly go over to the uh, drawing and animation and probably use a ball as well. As long as the ball heading didn't change, you could probably do that. I just made a little pixel dot and just took a picture of a dot and put it on there. Um, just kind of so you can see how it works. So the first thing you do is I've initialized um, all of my images, all of my sprites over here to an X and a Y. Now this is not the correct X and Y. So I just made them all zero to begin with, just so you could kind of see what's happening. And then I have a placement, which is the dot for each one that I want it to match up to. So I had to initialize all of those X's and Y's before I can get anywhere. So these originals are where they're supposed to be. And I often have people ask, well, how do you know? Well, if you go back and I want this to be here, I can click on that Apple image. Its X is 198 and its Y is 267. So I'm just going to grab my pen and write it down so that I have 198 and 267 off to the side. And then I can go ahead and put that in here in my initialize original Apple X to 198 and the original Y to 267. And right now it doesn't do anything. I'm just initializing those so that when the screen initializes, it starts with the apple in this lower corner because that's where I want it. For example, that's the root, and I'm going to initialize that to negative 1, 2, 6, 7. And I can read those over here in the properties panel. So I'm just going to go find that and change it. Okay, now that we've got all of our initialized um, points, X and Y for everything done, now we have to talk about how to drag it. Well, for example, I'm going to start with the apple just because that's easy. I want to drag it, so I'm going to grab this when apple dragged uh, block. And I need to move this apple. So I believe down here... I can pull, call Apple, nope, that's Apple placement. I don't want to drag the placement. Oops. I want to drag the actual Apple image. There it is. So Apple image dragged. And my Apple image should also have a call move. Yep, Apple image move too. And then I'm going to basically take this current X and current y that I just pulled from there and put them in there. Now the idea is that when I drag it around now it's going to follow me. Okay, that's pretty easy. But I want it to stop. So on the designer I want the apple to stop when it gets to that point right there. So 
I'm going to need to do something else called a touch up. So when I go to Apple, I can pull my Apple touch up. And the reason you want a touch up is because when you get to that point, you're going to stop and let go. That's essentially what a touch up is, is a pulling and letting go. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, and in this case, it's going to have to collide with that dot that I put there. But notice it's got the wrong kind of thing. So I think what I want is an if. So I'm going to put an if in there. So if it collides with other, and the other needs to be the Apple placement. So if I go all the way down, Apple placement. So if it collides with Apple placement, then um, I need to move it to the Apple placement. So I'm going to move the Apple image to, but instead of current X and Y, I'm going to move it to the Apple placement. So I go back to Apple placement. There's an Apple placement X, and there's an Apple placement Y right there. So now it's going to move to that place, and now I don't want it to move again. So I go back to my Apple image, and I want to turn my Apple image off. I still want to see it, but I don't want to be able to drag it anymore. So once it's there, I need to disable it. So I need to set that to a false enabled statement so that it no longer will drag around. The other thing I want to do is I want the dot to disappear <laughs> because when I'm dragging this guy, it's going to sit over the top. And right now you can see it, you can't see the dot behind it. But I've done this before and I know that if I don't put, make that dot invisible once I get there, then it's going to be a problem. So we're going to go make that dot Apple placement. Uh, it's the same exact thing, except that in this case, instead of making it like up here, instead of disabling it so it can't be moved, I want it to be invisible. So set Apple placement. Set Apple placement visible to false. And so now that should keep it from showing up. So now I've got all that done. But if it drags to some place that's not that, I need it to go back to the original spot. So that's going to actually be an else. So I just used the mutator and pulled an else. And my else is going to be the same move to, except I'm going to change where it goes. In this case, I don't want to change it to where the placement is. So I'm going to pull those out. I want to change it to the original location again. So I can go over here to get, pull a generic get block and then choose I want the apple, original apple x and I'm just going to duplicate it and then I want the original apple y. There it is. And so now it should, when I drag it over, stay and it should go back if it's in the wrong location. But there's got to be a way, like if it doesn't work, to move everything back. So I'm actually going to need to add a reset button here. And buttons are pretty easy to program. You've probably programmed plenty of buttons. Um, the trick is naming them correctly. So I'm going to rename this as reset button. I like to always name it not only what it does, but what it is. It's a button. So down here for the text, I'm going to say reset. I can go in and make it pretty and interesting later. Right now, I just need a button. So I'm just going to come down here. When you click the reset button, I want everything to go back to original and turn back on. So going back to original was this. So right now, I'm only dealing with that one because once I get one of my pictures to move, I can just duplicate the whole set and change all the names to make it work for all the other ones. So I want it to go back to original and I'm going to duplicate this, but instead of making it false, I'm going to make it true because I want to be able to drag it now. And I want the placement 
to be visible again so that I can actually see it. So now let's go ahead and try it. Okay, so here's the, um, the app. It's just on my tablet because my emulator isn't working today, otherwise I'd show it to you on there. So I can drag it, drop it, it stays. And notice I don't have a very good picture here. If I did, it would have no background and my sprite would be prettier. But just for example purposes, you can see it stops and the dot disappears. And then when I hit reset, it goes back. And if I drag it to somewhere else, it should bounce back to where I want it, which it does. Now, all I have to do is duplicate that for all of my other pieces so that they all work correctly.